Hello everyone, Logan from Curated Avalon, and today I will be giving my Vanishing Point fountain pen a deep clean. I try to do this at least once a month. I maintain my fountain pens just with like a regular quick clean once a week approximately. Sometimes I'll skip over, uh, but I try to give them a deep clean once a month, especially the ones that I'm using so very often like this vanishing point. So this is Pilot's Stripes. This is a rhodium plated version. And so it does, it gets, uh, it gets a little grimy sometimes, uh, fingerprints, uh, dust particles, all kinds of stuff. So it does appreciate a good thorough cleaning. So to get started, I will grab my supplies and get to it. I have Goulet Pens Pen Flush. This is for when water alone isn't enough. This is just to encourage the excess or dried up ink in the pen to leave the pen and to leave it nice and clean. I have a bulb syringe to flush the pen nib out. I have a few glasses to hold the water while I'm cleaning the pen and also to soak the pen itself in. Some paper towels, you might not need this many. Usually I just use one or half of one, but I grabbed a couple extra just in case because I do tend to use more paper towels with a deep cleaning as opposed to just a quick flush. I also use this piece of sponge that I cut from a larger sponge to clean between the clip of the pen. Uh, sometimes I'll use it to rub uh, down uh, through little crevices. It's just really handy. I'm just going to dismantle the pen. Uh, the vanishing point unscrews from the middle and you want to be careful. I kind of like to anchor my finger on the back of this piece because there's a spring in here and it will kind of fly off. Um, I don't know if I can quite demonstrate it, but it will. It will literally just pop right off. So you want to be careful. And then this is the nib section. This converter pops out. And then this is the top piece. There is a little trap door right in here that you can only uh, access uh, function if it is all together. So that is one of the deep cleaning things that I do as well. I, I completely put the pen back together to clean out that little trap door as well. So I will be setting the two body pieces in one of the glasses to soak for just a few, like a minute, no more than two minutes. Just let that sink down. And then I will be taking the bulb syringe and filling it with the solution to clean out the nib section. So just add a little bit of pressure, it doesn't need to be too much, and the water will come out. Hopefully all the ink will come out. Yeah, I haven't cleaned this pen in a little while, so it probably has all kinds of stuff stuck in there. I'll do this a few times and then use a paper towel to help draw even more ink down from the nib and then do it a couple more times. Okay, so 
Now I'm just going to grab a paper towel and wrap it around the nib and making sure it goes around the entire nib all the way up to the top and just put some light pressure and encourage the ink, whatever, to flow down through the nib. Um, there's not too much there, so that's a good sign. Okay, so now I'm going to set this in the solution for a few minutes. I'll grab the body pieces out and start cleaning them. So they had quite a bit of ink in them apparently. Just take a little bit of the solution. And there's, you don't really want to apply pressure to this body. There is a mechanism in there with that little trap door. Um, oh wow, there's a lot in there. Uh, but I do like to shoot a little bit of the solution in, grab both ends, and you want to hold on to this well, and shake. This just helps get anything loose. And I'll do this a couple of times. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside and go with the end piece. This one's actually a little harder to do. You kind of have to hold it like this. You can hold it from the back, but then I feel like the solution doesn't go all the way through. While that is still soaking, I'll take a piece of paper towel and roll it as tightly as I can get it. You can use less paper towel if that helps. And I take the body piece and slide the paper towel inside. And go back to shaking. And this just helps me know how much ink could still be in there. Helps to dry it out so I can get back to writing faster. I usually completely dry the pen out as much as I can so I can just go ahead back to writing with it, but it is good to leave it for a little bit to completely air dry. All right. Just this one next. Okay. I'll set that one aside. Now I will be cleaning out the converter. And to do this, to get a little bit of solution and shoot it on the inside. You can twist it up and down. I like to get a lot of the initial ink out so that doesn't get the solution as dirty so I don't have to waste it. And then once I've got most of it out, I'll go ahead and dip it in the solution. Right, and I'll go ahead and let that sit 
in the solution for a few minutes while I go back to the nib unit. A good clean solution. And I'm just going to do this a couple more times. See, it looks clean. All right, so I'm going to set that aside. I've deemed it clean and come back to the converter. All right, so for this, if I can get to the solution's a little dirty, so I'm going to the clean solution in there. Actually, I'm going to add a little water to it, I think. Just give myself a little more. There we go. I am just going to put in a little bit of water and then shake that. That helps get all of the uh, ink that could be hiding in some of the crevices that just doesn't want to come out. It works pretty well. Okay, that looks pretty clean. So I'm going to set that aside and start drying everything. So one last thing before I call this pen completely cleaned, I usually forget to do this. Uh, I'm going to completely assemble the pen and really get that trap door cleaned out. You wanna be careful when putting this back on because it will spring back on you. All right, and to clean out the trap door, I just dunk the pen in and activate the pen. So, I mean, I just do it once or twice, no big deal. I just feel like it helps get that trap door clean. Okay, so now I will dismantle the pen again. I will get this fully dried, and in order to do that, I need paper towel. So again, just rolling paper towel pieces actually can kind of rip it up even smaller than that. Just wad it up, get it nice and tight. Twist. And like I said, if you're not worried about using your pen right away, you can just leave it to air dry. I find this helps get excess ink out as well. And you want to be careful, I, I want to say, uh, when doing this, because you do have a mechanism in the top of the vanishing point. You don't really want to force it. Uh, you just want to be kind of gentle. Kind of twist as you're kind of pulling it out. So that gets all the water from the front. And you can just keep doing that, working on that until you get it completely dry. Uh, one thing about the vanishing point, since you do have the click, the clickability element at the back of the pen, uh, clicking that kind of in and out to get the water that's still inside. Like, let's see if you can see. Like, we've got water droplets, dry them off, click it back in, click it back out, and more water. Do that a few times. Just twist that. You want to be gentle here too, because again, you have another mechanism here. So always be gentle with your fountain pens. Don't want to force anything. Okay, and also I will tap the pieces. I do this gently. It just gives me an idea Ooh, look at that. Got some ink left in there. You can take the very end, make it really tiny, pack it down, and stick it in the front 
of the trap door and just kind of twist it around a little bit, not forcing anything, just hoping that some of the ink will absorb into the paper towel. There is always so much more ink in fountain pens than we think. <laughs> Um, also, if I have been really good about cleaning my fountain pens, uh, and I do clean them weekly like I'm supposed to, this process is much quicker. Uh, it's much faster, much less ink. This poor pen I have neglected a little bit, and it hasn't been cleaned in a while. Yeah, just keep doing that until it comes out clean. Okay, that's probably good enough. All right, and to the nib section, I'll grab a fresh piece of paper towel and just give the body a little bit of a rub down. Be very gentle when you get to the nib. You don't want to apply any pressure. Just place the paper towel over top. Encourage the water to come down. Just very gentle. And tap it out. Ooh, look at that. Oh my goodness. Well, in those cases, even when you have given it a very thorough cleaning and you find excess ink, you get to go back to the bulb syringe and clean a little bit more. I'm back. I just uh, cleaned this out with a bulb syringe three or four more times. And so now I will dry it out. <laughs> Be really gentle again. See, that looks good and clean. That looks clean. All right, so I will take a small piece of paper towel and wad that up. Be gentle as always. Just encourage some of the water to dry up. bit there. All right, now I'll set that aside to dry. The converter, now some converters can be taken apart. Um, this one, the Con 40, does really well as far as drying out for me, so I don't usually worry about it too much. Seems like all of the excess liquid gets out fairly well. Yeah, and you can clean these really well, let them sit out overnight to dry out, and that's fine. Uh, I just try to get as much water out as I can and then go back to using it because I usually need it. Smart thing to do is to have extra converters so that you can allow one to dry out and just go back to writing with using your spare. So I will leave those pieces probably for 15 minutes just to ensure that they are good and dry and then reassemble the pen. So I'm going to assemble the nib section, set the body aside, and I'll go ahead and 
ink this pen up. So I'll be using Noodler's Dark Matter. And Noodler's does suggest to shake their inks. And for the full fill method, let's make sure the stopper is all the way down. Fill the converter once. See how, let's see, I'm gonna have to pull it out to show you. There's a lot of empty space there. That is fully rotated all the way up. There's all this space there where there is no ink. And I want ink to be there. So I will expel the ink back, dip in again, do two turns. Just clean the body off a little bit. That's actually a lot more than there normally is, but that's okay. All right, and so the stopper is still part way up. We've got some ink in here, and I need to pull the ink down. So it's gonna be a little difficult because you wanna be holding this straight up while you do it. But for the camera, I'll try to go like that. All right, so now it should be all the way down. And now I need to go up until ink shows up here. Sometimes it'll bubble, but bubbling does not mean that there is actually ink there. That's the only thing about shaking inks. You do uh, end up with air bubbles, which could be a little unfortunate. And if you overturn like I just did, I'll end up with a big ink mess, but that's okay. Doesn't really happen <laughs> unless I'm, I'm trying to film this, but that's okay. Yeah, I can't always see things through the camera lens, but the idea is uh, once you see ink actually pooling here, you stop turning, go back into the ink bottle and fully turn the rest of the way. So now you should have should have ink all the way up to here, and I do, so yay. So that is a full fill. And that's a lot more ink than you would typically get. Um, it seems like I'm wasting a lot. I promise this isn't this messy <laughs> usually, but uh, yeah, now I have a full pen, and I can go ahead and assemble. I'm gonna set that aside because I'm gonna clean the body off because I know I had, I have ink on it from all of that. So if you have a polishing cloth, now is the time to use it. But right now I just have a paper towel, so I'm just going to clean off all of that ink that I just smeared on there. This also gives it a nice shine. Okay, well that is a very clean vanishing point nice and shiny and ready to go and fully filled.